everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for our Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Butchester. You guys know what I like to do on my show. Say it with me. I want to enlighten, inspire, and empower you to become your best self. The scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Fire. And that's what we want to do today. We want to get you fired up about my guest. I'll be spending time today with Louis Paulin when we'll be talking about his book, The Meaning of 50. Three. So go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee or get your tea because we are about to get started. Hello, Louis. Thank you so much for joining me here on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Hello, Dr. Angela. I'm so glad to be with you today. We are so glad to have you. Now, as is tradition here on the show, we always give our guests an opportunity to introduce themselves to perhaps those few folks out there that may not be familiar with you or your work. So first question for you is, tell us a little bit about yourself. What makes you, you? That's a great question. Um, The best way to answer that question, I believe, is uh, life. Um, I think what really uh, can describe me most is life because I love life. I love uh, to improve life because uh, I grew up in a very difficult environment. Um, my parents were, were Christian, but uh, we had a very difficult life because uh, at probably four or five, my parents got divorced. And uh, my mother left home, and we were five, uh, three kids, and um, I'm the last one, the third kid. I decided to, to go with my mother because I, I, I don't know, for, for some reason, I wanted to stay with her. But staying with her really changed my life because I, I saw the way she was, uh, even if things were very difficult, but she really fight. Uh, she really tried very hard to raise me, to raise a young boy. And I really learned from the fact that she really tried. And, and at that very age, I wanted to do better. I wanted to have a better family. Even, even when I was probably four or five, I wanted to have a better life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, uh, do better. And Absolutely. I, I, that I I think uh, my faith uh, started at that age. I really had faith in the Lord because my mother, she Absolutely. every Sunday we went to to the church and uh, I wanted to to have better because. So when it comes to being uh, an author, is that something that you've always wanted to do, or did you find that this was a way for you to share your knowledge with the world? No, not at all. Uh, actually, uh, if you look at my background, I'm an engineer, and uh, I never really wanted to write a book. <laughs> it, it, for, to me, it's a surprise. Uh, because I, when I received a, re a revelation from the Lord, that was on September 7, 2014, and that exactly when I wanted to uh, to share the revelation that I received from the Lord. So to tell you exactly, I didn't really want to be an author, but I, since I received a, re a revelation from the Lord, and that's that's exactly when I decided hmm. to uh -huh. write the book. Now, the title of your book, The Meaning of 53, and you have the, the actual uh, number there, The Meaning of 5-3, of 53. Why was that the, the proper name for your book? Uh, because 53, uh, to me, is the unique number that explains the life. And I wanted to make it clear for, 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 the, for the readers to understand that that number explains life. Uh, that number, uh, five and three, five is the human number, our number, and three is God's number, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that number is unique because he cannot 
divide by only itself that number and and if you look at even in the bible there are many many occurrences of that number in the bible and that number represents also jesus christ himself jesus christ as the perfect servant of the lord jesus christ is the son of god god himself so to me that number again explains life so since in that number you can see the five uh, comes before three so that means we as human beings we always have to look after god we always have to seek for the lord to, 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 to know the answer and i wanted to make sure that people understand that's why i put now, when it comes to the proper age group, I always ask this question, is the book appropriate for someone uh, as young as high school? So that would be ages 14 through 18. Or should they be college age and older? Do they need a little bit more life experience? That's a good question. I think some part of the book requires uh, some, maybe some part of the book because I do, I do some calculation to explain that number, but it's really basic, uh, basic calculation. I believe someone uh, in high school can understand that. Okay, great, great. Now, when it comes to the, the proper way to read your book, many authors will present their information in a way that we should read it from cover to cover, simply meaning page after page. Others will present it in a way where we should read chapter one or section one before moving on to chapter two or section two. Others perhaps even present it more like a devotional where you should read three or four pages, put it down, really digest the information you've read before moving on. However, you could also pick it up and start anywhere, but you do need to just read it in bite-sized pieces. Uh, how did you present your book? Did you follow uh, any particular outline? Uh, I did not. Uh, actually, what I wanted to explain to people, I wanted to explain to people life. I wanted to explain life uh, through numbers and letters, and that it's very it's a very different book. I I I, I must agree. Uh, I, I must tell you, it's a very different book. I wanted to explain life with letters and numbers, and to tell people life is easy. It's very easy if you understand your own life. If you uh, pay attention to things that that's happening before you uh, uh, around you. You can dis, uh, discover life because that number, I had that number with me for almost two decades, but I never really questioned it. <laughs> it's crazy that I had that number with me for almost two decades. I never really, uh, I didn't know. I I I didn't know exactly what it means. But the Lord Jesus Christ revealed that number mm. to me on September 7, 2014, even if I had that number with me for almost two decades. So what, I, what I'm trying to tell you is that people, I, in that book, I, I kind of, uh, I forced people to question their own lives. Now, for so many of the authors that I've had an opportunity to talk with, there is an overarching message or a bit of wisdom that they want to make sure that every reader picks up uh, once they have completed reading the book. What would you say is that overarching message that you want to make sure every reader takes away? Uh, the message that I want them to to understand in that book is to to make a step toward the Lord to know the truth. That's the whole message because the truth is there. The truth is available for them, but they have to make a step toward the Lord to know the truth. Because many people they question things, but they don't they don't actually um, make the step to understand. So. I want them to make the step to know the truth. That's exactly what I did in 2013, and I finally discovered the, the truth almost one year after that. 
Mm -hmm. Now, you say that it is really important that people should know Jesus Christ. Now, we are on uh, Christian radio, so all of the listeners here, uh, by and large, are already uh, believers in the faith. But I do want to give you an opportunity, should we have someone that is perhaps new to the faith or they're trying to determine whether or not uh, Christianity is for them? Them. How do you answer that question when someone poses that to you? Why is it important that people know about Jesus Christ? Um, what's important about Jesus Christ, um, even if uh, that person is Christian or not, what's important about Jesus Christ is the fact that Jesus Christ promised the abundant life. I was a Christian during my entire life. I did not understand that. I did not experience the abundant life. And it's only on um, when the Lord revealed himself to me in September 2014. And after that, I spent almost two years trying to understand. And it's only in 2000, uh, 2016 that the Lord really explained to me What's the abundant life? And I believe anyone wants to live the abundant life, even if that person is a Christian or not. So Jesus Christ is the only one in the entire history that promised the abundant life and prove it. And I believe that if the person uh, wants to be that, to live that life, that person needs to at least ask the question, why Jesus Christ promised that life? and how that person can live the abundant life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, for for someone who um, who feels as though they are they are on the the verge of their own personal breakthrough uh, when it comes to uh, their spirituality or or their religious life. How do you think that this book will help them uh, understand uh, or know that yes, it is time to take the next step? I think uh, from from my own history, as I explained in the book, I had everything around me. Even the Holy Spirit was with me. I did not understand. I did not understand. That's, that's, that's the issue. And that really surprised me. Because when I saw that light on September 7, 2014, what I realized at that time, the light was with me. The, the light was in me. I did not really notice anything about that life because when I look at my life, growing, growing up in poverty and succeeding in, at school, at university, and I even have a master's degree, I thought that I was smart. To me, it was only because I was smart. But when I received, when, when I really, when the Lord revealed Himself to me, He showed me everything. He showed me that He was, He had, always been with me. He was the one protecting me. He was the one doing everything in my life. And that, that's the thing. For that person listening to me right now, that person needs to question himself, question his own life, because the answer is there. For me, the way that I discovered the truth is when I decided to repent to the Lord Jesus Christ, even if I was a Christian, I did not really live a life of repentance. It's only in 2013 I was tired of living. I was living a stressful life. I have, you know, I had my family, two kids, my wife. Even if, you know, we had money, but I was really living a very difficult life. I did not really understand anything about even Christianity. And when the Lord revealed himself to me after my repentance, that's exactly when I understand what is it. So that person now listening to me and, and that person realized life is very difficult. I believe the, the, the first step to do is to question his own life and then repent to the Lord. And from that point, that person can just 
continue to make a step toward the Lord, and the Lord will be with you. Mm-hmm. I love it. Well, it is time for us to go to break. But before we do, can you remind everyone, please, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And how do we stay in contact with you? It's the meaning of 63. That book right now is on Amazon. And uh, just get in touch with me and contact me through uh, Facebook. My name, Louis. Armand Pauling, and also on my website, TheMeaningOf53.com. All righty, everyone. Now you know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. We are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. You guys know who I am. My guest today is Louis Paulin, and we are talking about his book, The Meaning of 53. Now, let me ask you this question. For, uh, for Since the beginning of time, people have been asking the question, why am I here? Uh, how do you address that question or that concern in your book? Um, I think we are all here to know the truth, and that's that's the whole reason we are, we are here to know the truth. And I believe even the Lord, the Lord, uh, He wants us to know the truth. Jesus Christ Himself, when they asked Him who He was, He said, "I'm here to testify to the truth." So the, the I think the reason why we are here is to know the truth. And if we don't know the truth, that's why we, sh- we struggle with life. Now I know exactly who I am. I know who is Jesus Christ, and that will really set me free. I'm, I'm totally free. I'm free from everything. I'm free from this life. I used to be very emotional. Um, I used to be afraid. Now I know the truth. I'm set free. So I believe everyone should know the truth. When we know, we know the truth, we are free. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that I talk about uh, many times with um, my program called Pivot for Purpose is just that finding or discovering or rediscovering one's purpose. I think that that's something that many people, especially uh, now that the world is coming out of a global pandemic, we're starting to look at what is my purpose? What have I been called to do in this lifetime? How do you talk about discovering our calling or figuring out what one's purpose is in your book? Um, First of all, the way I, I... I describe that is to first of all question. You have to question your life because I, I really questioned my life in 2013. I said, my God, okay, what am I doing? I was living a very stressful life. Even my family, it was very difficult for us. Even if I was making money, I questioned my life. And that's when I really Try, I, I really try to understand what really what's happening to me. And once I, you know, I, I, I did that, and I did that, I, I continued because the Lord, it was, I mean, the Lord was chasing me down, but I did not really see that. But the fact that I questioned myself, I read many books, including including Stephen Stephen Covey, you know, books about self development. I really read many books like this, you know, Dale Carnegie. I wanted to understand more. But what I noticed in those books, they explain life, but there's no power. There was no power to help me because I wanted to have, you know, some kind of power to at least do what they say that I should do. But in those books, I didn't find power. And then naturally, I decided to pray. It's really through prayer that I discovered the Lord and also He opened my, my ears and my life and I understand exactly why I'm here. I discovered my, my purpose and how it's here. So 
that person right now listening to me and asking himself why why I'm here and how I should you know how how I should know my purpose is to first question his life the second and to be in a good environment because if you're sometimes the environment the environment that you are in can can really blind your eyes because if you if you still have the very same friends the very same people that you deal with that can probably uh block you that can probably uh prevent you from discovering the truth so the environment and also your own motivation in life like i said at the beginning of the interview i wanted i always wanted to have a, a good life a better life if i don't live a better life i need to change many people don't want to change and that's the thing that again like i said that person should question himself if life is not good if you feel that you're not living a good life it's a time to change change the environment change your own habits change uh the way you live the way you think even change job change and then when you keep changing at some point you will discover the truth you will discover exactly your purpose and that exactly what happened to me Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have to agree with you there. You know, uh, figure out what uh, what you have been purposed to do uh, in this life, and and definitely do that, even if it requires radical change. I couldn't agree with you more. Now, for someone who says, you know, I've I've done that change. I I still stepped out, and and I have done that, and I agree with you as well. I am now ready to live the abundant life that I know has been promised to me in Jesus Christ. What does that abundant life in Christ look like for someone who who's never heard that phrase before or is unfamiliar with what that means? The abundant life, first of all, the abundant life is the Holy Spirit of God, is the presence of the Lord Himself. When because you can you can um experience like very difficult situation and still have peace. The abundant life is is heaven on earth life. That's the abundant life. It's it's the life, the powerful life. Whatever you face today, even at work, in family, uh, bad circumstances, you will experience, experience power. You will experience peace. And also, the abundant life is also money. I mean, I will not tell you that you don't, you don't need money to live. You need money. And if you live that abundant life, you will receive money to do whatever the Lord asks you to do. If, I can give you some example. To so this ministry that we started in 2017, um, the ministry, testimony ministry, I didn't know anything about ministry, but the Lord provides. Because we obey the Lord and we do exactly what He asked us to do, He provides. So the abundant life is the Holy Spirit of God first, and and the second is being obedient to the Lord to do exactly what He asks us to do. So if you have the Holy Spirit of God and you do the will of the Lord, you will receive power, and then you will live the abundant life. Because you can be Christian. Because I was born in the church, I was I was not a good Christian because I was living in sin. I did not obey the law. That's why I suffered. I suffered daily, even if I was a Christian. Because many people think that just being Christian that will change your life is actually when you if you want to live like Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ showed. The, the best version of life, the abundant life. Jesus Christ was a man. He was leading by the Holy Spirit of God, and he was he, he obeyed the Father. So Jesus Christ was exactly the person who showed the abundant life, being led by the Holy Spirit of God and doing the will of the Father. 
Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for for those answers. I, I love that. I want to switch gears just a little bit, and I want to make sure that I get this one question in. I try to ask at least one process question of all of my guests for our aspiring authors out there. And that one question um, for you is when it when it came to um, how you were going to release your book, every author has to decide if they are going to self-publish, if they're going to use professional services, or if they're going to pitch their book to the big brands. How did you determine uh, which way worked best for you? Um, I think uh, it, it, uh, it's both. I... I do some some self publishing and also I have a com- we have a company that helps with that and uh it's both all right then i I love it I love it um with that being said, I just want to say thank you so much for for spending some time with us here today um I think that you have really inspired someone out there to to pick up a copy of the book um I know that a lot of people are interested in numbers and uh the the meaning of numbers, so you have definitely uh piqued the interest of someone with such a curious title I love it I love it whatever it takes to to share the good news with with someone else out there I think is an awesome thing now before I let you go though can you remind everyone please what is the title of your book where can we get a copy and of course how do we stay in contact with you it's the meaning of 53 they can find the book on Amazon Uh, they can contact me uh, through Facebook, it's Louis Armand Parlin. You can also contact me uh, through my website. It's the meaning of 53.com. Thank you again for being on the guest, uh, being a guest on the show today. Thank you, Dr. Angela. Mm-hmm. And listeners, thank you for spending time with me here today as well. We appreciate your spending time with us because you could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here with us today, and I thank you for doing so. As always, may the Lord continue to shine His face upon you. May you receive His grace and His mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.